Hello, this is Jack with Gadget Factory, and today we're going to uh, make a screencast about something that's really useful, uh, something I just recently learned actually and wanted to share share with everyone out there that uh, might be doing some FPGA work. And uh, so basically, uh, what we're going to do is go over how you can debug the internal logic that's running inside an FPGA. And, um, you know, FPGAs are really cool, but one of the th the things that gets really challenging is that you have all this logic defined and no real good way to actually debug the logic without spending thousand dollar on something like the Xilinx chipscape or chipscope tool uh, that sort of thing um, and but I just recently came across a way that you can use the low-cost open bench logic sniffer uh, we, we sell those for fifty dollars uh, you can use it. It's a logic analyzer, and you can use the FPGA editor from the Xilinx toolkit to actually um, probe the internal logic. So uh, let's take a look at how that works. Okay, so I guess uh, let's start out with some background information. And what we have here opened up is a, a Xilinx project. This is a Xilinx ISE, and it's the logic sniffer. The, the actual VHDL code that runs on the logic sniffer it also runs on the Papilio 1 and uh, this is the version that is being synthesized for the Papilio 1 now uh, I ran into some problems with the UART communications and I needed to debug it and uh, we're gonna kinda just recreate what what I did to debug it um, so this bitstream that's generated here is going to run on the Papilio 1 and we are using a logic sniffer that's actually going to be connected to row C of the Papilio 1 and that will capture all, all the internal logic that we want to take a look at. So I'm going to uh, switch over to the webcam and we can take a look at how the hardware is set up. Okay, so what we have here, uh, down in the bottom we have a Papilio 1 and um, connected to row C of the Papilio one is the logic sniffer. It's just plugged in, uh, you know, vertically. Uh, I have this probe, and all it's doing is connecting ground so that the two circuit boards share common ground. Both the circuit boards are plugged into USB. Okay, let's go back to the project. All right, so what we have here is we have uh, the logic sniffer design. It's a VHDL design. It's already been synthesized to save time. Um, we're just going to take a little look. What we needed to debug was the uh, UART or the EIA 232 section. And uh, I started with the receiver section because that's where I was having problems. And just for the sake of demonstration of the actual technique itself, uh, we're going to run this with a working design. Um, we're not going to actually debug a, 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 the error. We're just going to see how it works with it working. Um, so if you go into the VHDL code, uh, you can see, you, you know, you if you're debugging this, you're going to want to study this and become familiar with it. For this purpose, you, you just need to know a couple things. Basically, there's a finite state machine that manages all the different states that this module can go into and um, it's all these states control the different states that <laughs> need to occur during normal UART communications. So we have seven states if I'm not mistaken. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and actually that's the wrong place to, to look at that. It would be defined up here. UART states one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have init. It's uh, where you know you always start out here. Next you go into wait for a stop bit. That usually happens really quick. Um, you wait for a start bit. This is where you usually sit and idle while you're waiting for a start bit to come in with a new byte. Then wait begin. Um, this is you wait for the half well, well, like it says, wait for first half of start bit. After that, we receive a byte. So this is pretty long. This, ha this takes a while. And uh, I'm going to come back with part two.